Alright, so in this video I'm going to be explaining this important article multi-source domain adaptation with mixture of experts. Uh, last time we were talking about bandits which is usually in the context of reinforcement learning but this time our action is a mixture of experts. So it's very similar to previous uh, video, but this time it uses a mixture of experts like this, that you have several experts, expert one, expert two, and then you have the final, uh, but it is all of them are in the context of multi-source because we have multi-sources as well. For example, we have K, uh, K sources. So if we propose a mixture of experts approach for unsupervised domain adaptation from multiple sources. The key idea is to explicitly capture the relationship between a target example and a different source domain. This relationship expressed by a point to set metric determines how to combine predictors trained on various domains. The metric is learned in an unsupervised fashion using meta training. For example, the kitchen product domain may include reviews on pans, code books, cookbooks or electronic devices, which cannot be perfectly aligned to a single source like cookware, books, or electronics. By intelligently aggregating distinct and complementary information from multiple sources, we may be able to, be, to better fit the target distribution. A straightforward approach to utilizing data from multiple sources is to combine them to, to a single domain, but never do that. That has a very bad performance. So this strategy does not account for distinct relations between individual sources and a target example. Constructing common feature space for this heterogeneous collection may wash out. This is the reason that I say it is bad because it may wash out informative characteristics of individual domain, I mean domain specific features, you lose this, you lose domain specific features. And also lead to negative transfer. Remember when I said we have a background color, background of red of cat, background color of green of cat, the green and cat should not be the features that should be transferred to the target domain because the color don't say anything about the semantic nature of this animal cat. So negative transfer should be avoided at any cost. Because a negative transfer, for example, a student previously learned that when the subject is singular, you will put an S at the end of the verb. When it is plural, you do not put an S at the end of the verb. However, the subjects I and you do not follow the rule. If the student have not learned the expectation properly, he will be adding an S at the end of the verb. So uh, your transfer could be positive or negative. For example, negative, it occurs when previous performance disrupts the per performance of the second task. Or it can be trans or can be referred to as interference and overgeneralization. So it should be avoided. So in general, we have four types of uh, learning transfer, negative transfer, we usually talk about negative transfer and positive transfer. In the literature, there are very th few things that they talk about far transfer, near transfer. 
Therefore, we propose to explicitly model the relationship between different source domains and target examples. We hypothesize that different source domains are aligned to different subspaces on the target domain. Specifically, in this paper, we model the domain relationship with a mixture of experts. For each target example, the predicted posterior is a weighted combination of all experts' predictions. The weights reflect the proximity of the example to each source domain. Our model learns this point-to-set metric automatically without additional supervision. So we define point-to-set metric using Mahalombi's distance between individual examples and a set. So our set, for example, could be domain. So domain, we have a domain and we have point. So what is the distance between this domain and this uh, point. The main challenge is to learn this metric in an unsupervised setting. We address it through a meta training procedure in which we create multiple meta tasks of domain adaptation from source domains. In each meta task, we pick one of the source domains as meta target and the rest source domains as meta sources. By minimizing the loss using the MOE, I mean mixture of experts, prediction and meta target, we are able to learn both the model and metrics simultaneously. So you see the architecture. E here is the encoder, like the generator in the adversarial training. Or backbone or your let's say it's just an encoder feature encoder that maps an input to a hidden representation so once you get your representation e of x f sub 1 is the classifier on the i's source domain so s1 is for first domain s2 for second domain so because for each of them we have different uh, classifier so that's why we have a mixture of classifiers. Each one has its own predictions, which could be in contrary to the next one. But in the framework of mixture of uh, experts, we can rely on a mixture of them. And M is a metric learning component that we should learn as well. Because as, as I said, what is the difference between a point and a domain? So the distance should be learned simultaneously along with these uh, predictions. So it's a simultaneous task. It's a joint task. So we follow the unsupervised multi-source domain adaptation setup, assuming access to labeled training data set from source domains. So we have four components. We have encoder. We have this F classifier that we have for different domains. We have metric. And our adversary is here. We use a typical neural uh, multitask learning architecture with a shared encoder. And this is our shared encoder. So you see that our goal is to design an encoder that supports transfer while maintaining source domain specific information. Depending on different tasks and data set, we select the appropriate encoders. It could be LSTM, it could be a CNA, it could be multi-layer perceptor. And let's talk about uh, this adversarial mode D that we have, this is another component on the top of the encoder in order to align the target domain with the source domain. You know, in adversarial uh, approach, we have a generator, we have a discriminator. We try to design this generator to fool the discriminator so that we, do not, we cannot understand whether it is coming from domain two or domain five, we cannot distinguish. So it's a, some good way, easy way to just reduce the covariate shift 
so that try to just a kind of mixing them so that we reduce the covariate shift that we, there exists between distributions. And then here, this is the, uh, that Mahalbinus distance that we want to learn. This is important. This is the, uh, your, uh, I mean, feature extractor. So we can learn a mu s is just the mean encoding of your uh, source, that domain that you want to see the difference, the distance between the point and the set that uh, domain. Uh, and W sub S I here is the output layer weights of F sub S I. Alpha is the parameterized metric function. And this alpha that I said, uh, that parameterized metric function can be learned like this. Depending on E, which is the, uh, we use F of D, because it's a better expressiveness, uh, it uh, leverages the expressiveness of another neural network. And uh, so E is the confidence score. And so, and then um, the point to set distance metric measures the distance between example and the mean encoding of S, while taking into account the pseudo covariance of S. In binary classification, however, the mean vector is likely to be located near the decision boundary, particularly under a balanced setting. Therefore, small d actually implies lower confidence of the corresponding classifier, which is counterintuitive. To this end, we instead uh, define this confidence as the difference between distances from X to each category of S. Uh, because in binary classification, we have two categories, positive and negative. And then we have for sequence tagging task, for example, part of speech tagging, we compute the distance metric at the token level. Unlike the binary classification, the decision boundary here is more complicated and the label distribution is typically imbalanced. The mean vector is unlikely to be located at the decision boundary. So we directly use the reverse distance as the confidence value for each token. And for training, for each example in the method, we compute its mixture of expert posterior. So this is the for entire multi-source training. And alpha is normalized over the meta sources for each meta target, rather than overall the K sources. For each meta target, we further optimize a supervised cross entropy loss using the corresponding labels. All supervised objectives are optimized jointly with the encoder being shared. Uh, they also use that MMD, maximum mean discrepancy, as the adversary to minimize divergence between marginal distribution of target domain and source domains. Specifically at this training epoch, given the K batches from all source domains, we sample a batch from our target domain and they minimize this MMD. And they also have uh, entropy regularization in the meta training process for each examples, we know exactly from which source X is sampled. So this provides additional insight that the alpha distribution is skewed, which can be utilized as a soft constraint. Therefore, we propose to regularize the entropy of the alpha distribution over all sources rather than meta sources. And finally, uh, they add this, this uh, I mean, entropy regularizer, mixture of expert, all of these losses that we talked, the adversarial, and the lambda controls 
the balance of, uh, for example, how much this mixture of uh, experts are important or other components of the loss. So we compute the MMD here, compute a mixture of expert here, uh, entropy here, cross entropy. <clears throat> so this is an example of kitchen reviews and their alpha distribution. You know, we needed alpha in that mixture of expert, if you remember, that is like attention. 